Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Tom. <laughs> Mike. I am. In the PA. Right here at H2DRadio.com. I'm Tom Arnone. I'm joined by Michael Mataraki, Sean Redden. I'm doing this every Wednesday. Rob Povey on the ones and twos. We got a special guest. We'll announce, we'll announce special guests later. At the 9 o'clock hour, we're hoping to have Jennifer Wilkes on. Did I get it right that time? From the Bucks County Carrier Times. We'll have her on talking Phillies. We got a lot talked about. We are live from the BMW of Atlantic City Studios. BMW has challenged their sales team. They must sell 100 vehicles, which means you save. But you can go right on their website, bmwatlanticcity.com. Find everything you need. Located right off exit 37 of the Parkway. Every Wednesday night, we are brought to you by none other than Gibson Mayor LLC, your certified public accountant, 215-369-3300. Find them on the web, gibsonmayor.com. We're going to get in the Eagles training camp. you got some position battles going on, you know, cornerback, wide receiver, you know, you could talk about who's going to be your fullback if they go that route, tight end, and obviously place kicker. You know, people don't talk about that. It's going to be big. You know, is Sturgis, Parkey, does Parkey come back from the groin, tearing 27 different muscles in his <laughs> groin? Is that even possible to come back from? I don't even know. But we'll get into all that later. Our main thing we want to talk about tonight is the Philadelphia Phillies, and now the Phillies stood pat at the trade deadline. And our poll question tonight, you can vote Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, A2D Radio is where you can find us. Do you agree with the Phillies standing pat? At the trade deadline, let us know. Yes, no, real simple one tonight. That's our main thing. We'll have Jennifer Wilgus on at 9, 10. Again, we're talking Phil's from the Buck County Carrier Times. And our poll question is brought to you every week by Scanzano Sports Center, located in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. Find them on the web, scanzanosports.com. That's where I just came from. That's where I was all day. You know, training lessons, just, you know. Putting in your work. Shaping the youth of today into being great baseball players, at least great hitters. I mean, the, I'm not going to speak for my fielding, but the in youth? terms of swinging a stick, there's no question. The, the youth? The youths. What, what the is, youths. What is the a youth? The youths of today. I don't even know what the hell that is, but <laughs> it felt good coming out. Uh, <laughs> so the question you, at hand. You, you get the My Cousin Vinny reference? Oh, I get everything, Mike. <laughs> That's why I'm here. But the question, do you agree with Stan and Pat? Mike, I think I already know where you stand. Sean, I don't know where you stand yet, but – We'll get everybody's opinion on this. Do you think the Phillies should have made some moves, not made some moves? What do you think? Oh, we'll get into that. We'll talk about winners and losers at the trade deadline. Personally, I don't have a problem with it. I, I, I think there's a couple of layers that we can get into here, but just on the surface, I don't necessarily have a problem with it. Sean? And I, I agree. I agree with Mike. I mean, I even I put up yesterday, I'm not upset. I'm not happy. I'm not upset. Could they have made a move, obviously, but I'm okay with them standing pat and then trying to rob somebody. I mean, they didn't necessarily have to move anybody, so why not try to pull a fast one and get something that exceeded your expectations? I don't know. I, I have an issue with it a little bit. I mean, I, you got to move Alex in there. I mean, you really do. At the end of the day, Jake Thompson, you want Jake Thompson up. I mean, so what are you going to do? you got to move one of the two if you're not going to lose – you know, if you're not going to trade Velasquez, mm. which I understand. I mean, if you're not going to get – we talked about him. Like, if you weren't going to get Mazzara back from Texas or Pro Far, there's no way you're trading Velasquez right. right there. You know, that's one of the two guys you want. But in terms of keeping Jeremy Hellicks in for what? You know, I understand that they get a conditional first-round pick next year. That's what I was going to ask. I, I don't that. know how that works. If he's only here for one year, they still get a conditional pick? Well, it depends on how much of a, a tender they make him in the offseason. Oh, well, it's okay. going to have to be $15 million if but, they want to keep him. But here's my conspiracy theory. Dun, dun, dun. I don't think Aaron Nola going on the disabled list today was completely due to injury. I think Aaron Nola going on the disabled list today may have been a little bit about tired arm, a little bit about not being overly successful, and maybe a little bit more about, yeah, it might be time to see Jake Thompson. Listen, I, I, we talked about Aaron Noel going on the DL a month and a half ago, too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That was something we talked about that was going to happen. You could smell it coming. A mile away. You know, when you're, first off, not located. And then when, guy, you know, when guys struggle, the first place they go is a DL in Major League Baseball. You can almost see that coming. You watch a game, a guy gets shuttled around, and you can almost say to yourself, well, guess what? You know, if that's on a Sunday night, Monday morning, there's going to be a report that this guy's going on a 15-day DL with some kind of arm issue. And it's right. just, I feel like it's a scapegoat way out. And in this way, I believe the tired arm. I don't believe the guy's hurt. I think it's just a tired arm. Tired arm. It's the most innings he's ever thrown in his career. 
but you know, he's not a guy who's going to blow up by you. So he's got to locate, mm-hmm. locate, locate him. He's got. You talk about when you compared Aaron Nola, you were comparing the guy to a Greg Maddox type. You know, locate in and out. He's hitting the black, hitting spots. When he doesn't, you can't – listen, you see that you can't get away throwing 102 down the pipe in this league. Right. You guys are going to turn it around. So if you're not locating 92, 90 and 92, you're in a lot of trouble. Uh, no, and that's quite, scary. no question about it. So Jake Thompson better be a stud. But going back to trading Jeremy Hellickson, I think you just got to take what you can get for him. Your farm system's loaded. Listen, when you talk about you didn't have to make a move, that's talking about a contender when you talk like that. You right. know what I mean? That's how you talk about contenders. When you talk about a team that – that is in a rebuild right now, you talk about the, anything you can get back for a guy, you're going to take when a guy's a free agent the next year. So you got to pull that trigger. I, and, uh, you know, and I just he, think you have to move for something. And honestly, Tommy, I don't necessarily disagree with that, but the other piece of this that we may not be considering, and we may not know because Matt Klintak, to his credit actually, has been playing it real, real close to the vest in the sense that you need dance partners. And the, the teams that Hellickson and, and even to, a, to, another ex- to a, a certain extent Velasquez were, you know, in discussions about, I mean, you, you had Miami. Miami went out and got Andrew Kashner and Colin Ray. Ray went back, and, yeah. Ray, and Ray went back. Ray got hurt, so they wound up trading two of the guys back. They flipped it back. But, you know, you had Miami. You had Texas. Texas went and got Luke Roy and Jeremy Jeffers. Now, could Texas have used another starter? Yeah, but did their focus change when they were able able to bolster the back end of the bullpen? I mean, they're, you know, Cleveland went out and got Andrew Miller. Again, probably could have used another starter, but chose to bolster the back end of the bullpen. And these are teams that, you know, could very well have just changed direction and weren't willing to dance with the Phillies when you get to a certain point. But, Mike, to your point, do you think the Phillies would have had more dance partners if Klintak didn't come out and say, we're looking for a top five prospect in return for Hellickson? Like, when I heard that, I almost fell over. I was like, a top five prospect for a journeyman pitcher like Jeremy Hellickson? It's, it's entirely possible, but one of the things Tom and I talked about last week was, yeah, he did put that out there, but that kind of it, – it almost helps Hellickson in the sense that it helps set his market for next year. Right. Because if – if they say they're going to want a, you know, a top five or a top ten prospect in return, the implication then is that they're going to at least tender him enough to where if he does sign with someone else, he's going to get more than the tender, and mm-hmm. then the Phillies are going to get that compensatory draft pick. So it's, but, okay, you know, so is, is so Klintak doing him a favor, or do they really want to keep this guy around? It's, that's the one thing that we're probably not going to know. Right. Listen, okay, so you can make the case for Jeremy Hawkinson, fine. But then you can't make the case for Gomez. I mean, you got to sell a guy like that high when you have a chance to sell high right there. Uh, there so, uh, that's, so that, the, you know, the, all these teams that need back end of yep. the bullpen help. I mean, let's look at the Toronto Blue Jays. You think they still don't need back end of bullpen help? They need back end of bullpen help for the last two or three years, right? So that's a guy, that, that's a team that you could trade him for. Okay, you're not going to get a top five guy, a top 10 guy, but maybe you can get a top 30 guy in the organization that's 18, 19 years old. I mean, that's where. No, he, I, don't, I don't disagree he really, with you. I don't disagree with you at say all. Say what on you that. want about Ruben Amaro. Ruben Amaro. Arrow is the one who revamped this farm system, not oh, Matt Quintack. And, and, you know, we all know this right now, for most people know this, but Matt Quintack failed at the trade deadline. I can't give this guy a C for this. You have to be able to move at least one of them. Mm-hmm. You just – when, when you're a bad baseball team, you can't make the case of standing pat. When you're in contention for something, that's where you can come to your fan base and say, hey, we're not going to give up stuff. But you're not right, – <laughs> you're giving yeah. up older guys. But see, right. I don't – You know, that's, I, that's the thing. But, see, this is the thing is – I don't even necessarily give it a grade. I just call it an incomplete because they just chose not to make a move, and I'm, I'm okay with it. To your point, though, I agree with you. If, if you look at the big three that we talked about last week being Hellickson, Velasquez, and Gomez, the one guy that I would be upset that they didn't move would be Gomez because they, okay, they yeah. should have gotten they should have been able to get something for him. You look at the team that they're playing now, the Giants. The Giants have been desperate for back end of the mm-hmm. bullpen help for weeks. And if you know if Klentak wasn't on the phone with them, yeah, then that's that's on him. But again, we don't know who the Giants were talking to either because the Giants were somewhat active. They went and got Will Smith from the Brewers. Maybe they wanted a left hander. We don't know. But yes, to your point, Tommy. Gomez should have been the one. Yeah, but I also think that 
Gomez isn't as valued around the league as he is in Philadelphia. Because, yeah, he's a closer on this team. Because, I mean, he started the year closer by committee. And I don't think the rest of the league views uh, Jemar Gomez as a closer. He don't throw hard. He's not going to throw a blind nobody. He's more of a middle reliever. So I think teams were a little lenient than to give up something big for a guy like that. Well, no question. I think that when you talk about Matt Quintack in his first year into this in this game, in this trade that line, he hasn't done it before. I mean, you could talk about a guy being an assistant GM. And, listen, you, you weren't in the fire. You, you saw what the GM was doing. You, you know, you were in the back – you know, you're in the back of the room overseeing it, but you weren't a big part of it in terms of making every move. Now, as you're running the whole show, now you're in a position where you have to make a move. Can you say maybe overwhelmed his first time through? Not, you know, nervous to pull the trigger his first time through? I mean, these are Yeah, things- he was afraid to make a bad deal. Yeah, and I, and I think that for the first time through, you can say, okay, I don't want to use the word nerves like we do in sports for guys, but... Uh, you know, gun shy, you know, maybe yep. the right the right phrase for it, that a guy was just a little gun shy to make a move, like to Sean's point, to mess up his first time around because the farm system is loaded. And to your point where you can say, I guess the only word time you can say this, well, there's no point to make a move to make a move. You can use that phrase, I guess, but then I'm still going to go back to them two players that you have to you get something, just get whatever you can. Whatever you can, give me a, give me an eighteen, nineteen year old, twenty year old kid, right? You know, because trust your trust your farm system to be able to develop. Because the Phillies never thought they were getting somebody that was really going to be a franchise changer when they traded Rollins for Eflin. But look how he turned out. He's had a quick path to the majors. Well, all them Ruben deals where you got to give a ton of credit for right. them aging guys that he was able to get just some some young talent back that ended up coming in this farm system and competing. And what happens? And when you build a farm system and you create competition. It makes guys better. Guys want to go out. When you have five good starters in a rotation at Lehigh Valley, Reading, wherever, right, what's, what's the, all five want to do? They all want to beat each other. Right. And the same thing goes for positional guys. So when you create that kind of atmosphere that this isn't nobody, nobody's given anything, you got to earn it, and you create that kind of farm system, that kind of attitude, that, that's where your farm system just continues to take off. And mm-hmm. I think that's right now well, there's, where the Phillies are. Right. There's two pieces of this, Tommy, that I, I don't necessarily think you're going to like, but I could think – I do think could very well be in I like play. everything. Well, yeah. number one, the the Reading Fight and Phils had a Facebook post yesterday that basically mapped out. They're the, on the book. The, they're they are on the book. <laughs> okay. You're on the book. <laughs> Everybody's on the I book. Saw. But they have they mapped out the five best teams in professional baseball. They being number one, Lynchburg is two, Trenton is three. So you got two teams in the Eastern League, one and three. The Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs are number four. Chicago Cubs are number five. So still, we had this conversation at this time last year, and I think we're going to have it again, is outside of injury, which conveniently Aaron Nola gets injured today, I don't necessarily know that we're going to see the pups come up until these teams get knocked out of the playoffs. Now, you may get a J.P. Crawford or a Nick Williams, but you're not going to get a full boat of September call-ups from Lehigh Valley and Redding until these teams get knocked out. And I know you hate this. I could see you seething <laughs> across the room. We don't listen. We, and here in Philadelphia, this is what gets me disgusted, right? Like here in this city, we don't, we're not, we don't go walking down whatever Main Street in Lehigh Valley for parades. That's not what we're about. <laughs> you don't want to You don't want to go down, about, you don't not, want to parade down MacArthur in Allentown? No, like the union, like the union can win it all. I don't give a rat's ass. <laughs> and, and, and you go and you go for the Philadelphia Soul. Like the, the minor league systems, we don't care about. It's about player development. It's not about championships. So the Phillies can't think like that when it when it, it's in terms of bringing up kids that need to come up and get some you know, at bats in the big leagues. It's important for these kids to get up here, get at bats, and learn how to make adjustments. It's the biggest thing we saw with guys who have failed like Don Brown who never made the adjustments back from pitchers. I want to see J.P. Crawford and Nick Williams see big league hitting, see big league sliders, big league off-speed pitches, and learn how to make adjustments each pitch. That's what great hitters do. Great hitters go up to the plate, and they're making adjustments pitch in and pitch out. No, you know, and not, I, I not just game adjustments, pitch in, pitch like, out. Like I said, I, that's what you want to see. I, I don't disagree with you. I just think in terms of organizational theory, they want these kids to learn how to win. So there's that fine line between, you know, do you need to get your top four, five, six prospects up to the show and get them that major league experience along with keeping the rest of the organization on the winning track. So it's, well, I, it's, it's a balance. They, they, listen, the rest of the organization can win 15 games down there, for all I care, <laughs> as long as there's talent. Right, you, you but, but if I'm they win saying? 15 games, they're not developing I, talent. I, I understand that, but listen, 
<laughs> but they've won enough games now to the point where we know there's talent there. Sean, I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the backhand to come out from Tommy <laughs> over here. Well, it just it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like it's all you know, it's all gravy. <laughs> they go win one and whatever. Like okay, good. You, you got you got a farm system that wins. But at the end of the day, you want to have a farm system that okay competes. I don't need championships, but I need you cycling right. in players. That's what I need, and that, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for this organization to be able to bring kids like Crawford and Williams up and Thompson, and let's see how they can make adjustments in September and get their feet wet because you want these guys on opening day roster next year. I mean, you right. cannot sell me or anybody else for Crawford, Williams, and Thompson not to be in your opening day lineup next year. Right. And when are you going to get their feet wet in spring training when nobody cares? I mean, grand September, you have less teams that care, but at least you're seeing big league pitching. Yeah. And I think they need that. These kids need to be able, like we talk about, say it a million times, pitch by pitch adjustments make great hitters. And that's what I need to say. And same for pitchers. You know, pitch by pitch adjustments to whatever hitters up. And, that, and that's what we want to see here. So, you know, I, I get it. Matt Quintak, I, I think, gun shy at the deadline right. is the phrase we can use for Matt Quintak. You know, we, Gomez, Gomez should not still be on this roster. Right. And, and Helixson, you can make the case that he, you know, okay, you cap him, whatever. But you're not going to hit him with a qualifying offer of $15 million next year. It's not my money. They got plenty of money, but I'm not giving it to Jeremy Helix. But where's his, and where's his roster spot? Because you're going to want Jake Thompson to be in the rotation next year. And to your point. Who are you going to take out? And to your point, you know, uh, there's other guys down there. You know, Lively's starting to pitch better. Right. So, you know, the farm system deep with arms, too. So, at some point, you know, me and Mike were talking last Wednesday, getting creative at the deadline. You know, if you were able to move Velasquez, Helks, and you get prospects in, then you go mm-hmm. and you flip that for maybe a Chris Sale type and try to get it winning a little quicker. I mean, that's how you can get creative. Right. I don't expect him to come in and make a splash like that year one. But, you know, you got to get these kids up and start winning so that what the Cubs did, they, they didn't wait. You see the difference? Yeah. Theo Epstein, when they were – hey. You're hitting. Right. Let's yep. go. Time to go. Well, you know what I mean? They don't wait. That's why he's a genius, and Matt Quintack's a guy to me right now until proven otherwise. You understand right. that? So, you, you know, they didn't wait. For them kids For them kids to come up, it was boom, boom. And, right. and they started winning, and then what happens? Their farm system's still good, and now they can f- s- go trade guys in their farm system. Uh-huh. They get MLB talent to win right this second. Yep. Right, Sean? And they're still the top five in farm systems. Well, speaking of the Cubs – one of the biggest Cubs fans I know who happens to reside in this area. You like that segue? I, I do yeah, like that yeah. segue. <laughs> I've done it before. One of the biggest Cubs fans I know, also um, Calkins Media, Bucks County Courier Times, Burlington County Times, Doylestown Intelligencer, Game On, covers everything in this area. Joining us on the phone right now, Jen Wilgus. Jen, can you hear us? Jen? Going once, going twice. Jen? Oh, you have to try it again. Try it again? Yeah, you have to try it again. Okay, line is still open. All right, well, we'll just keep going. All right. Let me try her back one more time, guys. Nothing like dead air. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, like, nothing like dead air to. Uh... Here, just put it on. Just get it on mine. I know mine works. So, here you can you can handle all this. I'm going to continue to talk. Sean, how are you? I'm Dan, good. how you Came doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying right now. That's all I'm giving you. Is Dan? I threw. I, look, I I'm all out of the loop. I just threw on my case for my phone. I didn't give him my freaking phone. I didn't give my phone. Now he needs passwords. We got touch ID. <laughs> Did you say something intelligence when you were talking about Jennifer? Like that made me nervous. Like we got CIA calling in. <laughs> like I heard something intelligence. Can, can I just get a, a keyboard where I can dial? Sure, Mike. Is that what you need? <laughs> you know, first time on an Apple product. Actually, yeah, it is. Oh, well, welcome. Jack off. Welcome in. <laughs> welcome in, Tom, Mike, AM, and the PM right here, at 2 dcom the worldwide leader of Real Talk. Every Wednesday, we're, we're going to be joined by Sean Redden as well, Rob Povey on the ones and twos. We'll have a special Eagles guest later. We're waiting to get Jennifer. Will gets on the phone from the Bucks County Carrier Times. We'll have her on in a little bit. But our poll question that you can vote on, do you agree with the Philly Stan and Pat at the deadline? Yes or no? Let us know. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. A2D Radio is where you can find us. And real quick, we'll give you a little sponsor read for BMW of Atlantic City. And every month they challenge their sales team. They must sell 100 vehicles, which means you save right now. Lease is certified. pre owned Elite 2016 BMW. 320i with X Drive, just $299 a month for 36 months. The ultimate driving experience is closer than you think. BMW Atlantic City, 
easy to get to. Minutes off exit 37 in the Parkway online, BMW of Atlantic City. Dot com. And, well, I said I disagree with them standing to pat the trade deadline. Sean, I think you and Mike were ag- agreed with them yeah. and being okay with it. So, we listen, we stood sort of different sides of it, and, th- and that's fine. I'm not going to agree with you guys either way. Then we'll just keep, <laughs> we'll just keep talking. All right, well, let's give Jen a try. Jen, can you hear us? Very, there we, there we go. Fantastic. So, Jen, I was uh, – before we, we were trying to get you on the line the first time, Tom had mentioned – uh, something about the Cubs and how Theo Epstein has has put the Cubs together. And my initial segue was that you are one of the biggest Cubs fans that I know, but you are right here working in this area. Ladies and gentlemen, as I said, Calkins Media, Bucks County Courier Times, Burlington County <laughs> Times, Doylestown Intelligencer, Game On, covers everything from high school to the pros. Jen Wilgus joining us. Jen, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. I'm sorry. I can't really hear you guys, but I'll do my best. Oh, we, can hear, um, we can hear you just fine. So as long as you can make out what we're saying, just keep rocking because you're great. Okay. So, Jen, what were, you, what were your thoughts overall with the Phillies standing pat at the trade deadline? And then after we, uh, after we get into that, we'll talk a little bit about some of the winners and losers throughout the major leagues. Well, you know – the teams that really made a splash at the trade deadline are the teams that are clear contenders. And nobody's going to say the Phillies are contending for anything. I mean, it's, it's basically a football season in Philadelphia right now. Um, and, I, and I can't get back at a team for not making a deal. I mean, uh, it is kind of remarkable to me, though, that in a, in a trade sort of season when pitching was such a big deal, none of your guys could move the needle for anybody I mean, and I, but at the same time, you know, I don't think anyone's going to really look back and be like, why didn't you trade Hellickson? Uh, I mean, cause this team is going to be good. Um, and if, if, if the, the pieces went in place for a, for a good deal that's really going to benefit the future because that's what this is all about now for the Phillies, um, then, you know, I'm, I'm not mad at it. <laughs> uh, it's, it's interesting, Jen, because we were talking right before we got you on that, you know, the, the fact that they didn't move Hellickson or Velasquez, Sean and I are, are okay with that. Tom is not okay with that. But I think the three of us are all very much in agreement that in terms of all of the teams that need someone in the back end of the bullpen, they should have been able to move Gomez. Thoughts on that? Uh, you would think so. I mean, look at, the, look at the, the relievers that went in these deals. I mean, have, have you heard of all of them? I, I, I honestly have <laughs> You mean you mean like guys like Will Smith and Zach Duke? Right, exactly. Uh, I mean, even the even the guys that the Cubs got. Who, by the way, freaking Smith dunked today. Um, <laughs> but I mean, Montgomery Smith. I mean, obviously Chapman. You know, I'm not talking about him. But yeah, I mean, although Gomez has his hands full right now, so I don't think he's worried about baseball too much. Did you hear he was on paternity? Yeah, leave? He, he went on paternity leave today. Yeah, so. <laughs> And who knows? Maybe that's a reason that he didn't get traded. We don't know. Yeah, really? I mean, I was going to joke about that, but I didn't think that was like a legit. Yeah, if that's. A legit thing. Hey, hey, Jen. Um, if that's the case, I I quit then. <laughs> <laughs> well, you you never know. Some some bonehead general manager can say, "Well, you're going to trade me the guy, and then he's going to be gone three days later for a paternity leave." Thanks, but no thanks. That guy should get fired tomorrow. But that's another story for another time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you you, you don't know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a yawn in Philadelphia. But, I mean, hope better days are ahead. The Eagles are starting. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jen, one of, one of the things that we were talking about right before you came on the air, and I feel like I can, can ask you about this because you and I are kind of of the, the same cloth where we're big on the eye test with these minor league players. You know, I... I know you've been out to Reading a few times. I've been to Lehigh Valley and Reading. And the, the issue that we were tossing around right before you came on was, are the Phillies going to, for lack of a better term, bite the bullet and bring up guys like Jake Thompson, Nick Williams, J.P. Crawford, even possibly guys like uh, Alfaro and Cousins, a double jump you know, from double A up to the majors for a September call-up, Or do you think they're going to leave these guys down there with their clubs and have these clubs 
you know, basically learn how to win. What are your thoughts on that? That is a really good question. Um, and I mean, I don't know. What, what's the benefit? Obviously, the benefit of bringing them up to get a taste of the major leagues. But, I mean, Redding's really got something special going on. Um, at least, and by the way, I only went once with my parents, and my main, <laughs> my, my main, the eye test that I was giving it was, you know, how much, how much can I eat, and how much can I drink, <laughs> with, and with your parents being I, designated I, I drivers. Player evaluation personnel at that, at that juncture, but, <laughs> uh, The only thing you were evaluating were, uh, 32 ounce PBRs for 675. Dude, they have a peach vanilla cider that is just the best. Oh, you're such a girl. Um, I, I forget. I forget the name of their cider. Well, that's not why you have me on here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but if you're going to Reading, get yourself a, right. a large peach vanilla cider. I mean, I don't know, dude. I really don't know what to say as far as that goes. I mean, if you got some special guys who you really think could benefit, you know, from some meaningless games at the major well, league level, whereas being in meaningful games at the minor league level, I mean, I definitely can see a benefit in that. So. Well, let's play, a, let's play a little game of what would Theo Epstein do? Because, that, that, Tommy, that's where you went, right? You said, yeah, I, what, I would, think, what would Theo do? Yeah, Jenna, I think that, you know, it's all great them winning in the minors, and, and that's good for them if you have players that aren't on the cost of being in your opening day lineup next year. So the only reason I would say – to have Crawford, Williams, Thompson, guys like that up. I mean, you don't have to go a Faro and, and guys make double jumps, but at least for, for them three, it's just to get them big league experience, let them start to make adjustments at the big league level, and just get a taste because if they're going to be starting opening day next year, I just want them to have at least have a taste on what it's like to travel at the big league level, preparation at the big league level. You know the whole, you know the whole spiel of uh, what goes on. So, you know, that's sort of my thought. But, yeah, what, do you, what is your opinion on that one? Oh, absolutely. I mean, obviously. I mean, you, you, you ask those guys, the players, I mean, they're not, they kill to get any kind of taste of the major leagues. I mean, because who knows if they'll ever get it again. Um, it's a great what's point. It's going to happen. It's yeah, a crazy it game. But, yeah, you're right. I mean, just facing the, the caliber of pitching that you're going to see. And that's one thing that did strike me about watching the game at Reading and pitching the ball. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean – I, I don't know. Again, I, if I knew I was making a lot more money than I'm making right now. <laughs> yeah, right with you there. Right with you. <laughs> so, so Jen's like, if I could go to work for Philly.com versus staying where I am right now. Now, Jen, I'm not going to put you in that position. Yeah, let's not play that game. <laughs> All right, so why don't we go around the majors and we'll start with Jen while we have her on the line and maybe just do, like, two winners, two losers at the trade deadline? Yeah, let's do that. All right, Jen, you want to go first? You want to hit us with two winners and two losers? Yeah, let me go first so I'm not, like, looking like I'm stealing your... <laughs> oh, yo, ladies first, by all means. Well, I mean, obviously, the Rangers, holy cow, they really... I mean, they cleaned up. And, and I mean, they're a team that, that um, was already pretty darn good. I mean... And obviously, well, you, you want to. I mean, I, I have to say my cubbies, right? Because it, even though the, the middle relievers that they got are not drilling me right now, I mean, they haven't really had a chance to prove much. But Chapman, I mean, how can you how can you argue with that? I mean, we are going for it. And well, I, I think I, I think the, the Cubs the Cubs could have got Chapman and stopped, and they would have been a winner. I mean, just, just the right. fact that they added guys beyond Chapman. Well, are the Cubs ever winners? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just <laughs> Not well, until they I win mean, something. <laughs> I mean, seriously, you guys, if it doesn't happen this year, I'm going to be in the news. Not, not ready to I'm going to be in the news. <laughs> I'm gonna, there's going to be some bad foul play. <laughs> it's got to come to an end, right? I'm, I'm, doesn't it have to end? All curses are made to be broken. I'm going to be scraping you off the bar at Isaac Newton's. Don't jump. Don't jump. Well, you'll, so you gave me two winners. I'm, so I'm going to say Rangers and Cubs. All right. Now, how about two losers um, while we have you on the phone? Well, I mean, and here you say the Cubs are never winners. How about the Reds? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. This is, what a disappointment. And then obviously, you get rid of Jay Bruce. And it sure looks like Joey Votto was like, 
pissed off or something yesterday at the game. They tried to fight a fan fan last night. Shirt. Um, (laughs) Yeah, but here's here's the thing about Joey Votto. Like, and and I hate to interrupt you, Jen, but this guy's got like some weird, like, mental thing going with the fans this year because he totally screwed with those fans in Philadelphia. Mm And then, Sean, to your point, he looked like he was ready to fight a fan in his own (laughs) stadium last (laughs) night. But then an inning later, he writes an apology note to the guy on a ball and hands him the ball. Do you think that was his idea? Do you think that was his idea? No. No. No way. No, that uh, that had to be a PR guy. Yeah. That's what I think. (laughs) Um, But the the Reds are a a proud franchise, and they just think. I mean, they had so many bats, and they couldn't score any runs. Um, They're a a, a loser. Um, And then, uh, let's say, not a team, but a player. Yeah, feel free. Ooh, oh, yeah, that's a great one. Wow. I love it. That, and that hurts me, too. I mean, not, I'm out of... And, I mean, so you, when you talk about the, the trade deadline, you know, you think about getting prospects. And this is, this is where, you know, prospects are just that. You, there are no guarantees. This dude has all the tools. He's a beast. And nobody wants him. I mean, they can't all hold this guy. He's a little, I mean, a little bit of a head case, though. Or a oh, lot of a head case. Exactly. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, you never know what's happening. You know, he might have the tools, but what's his makeup, as they say in baseball? Um, he's a loser because who knows what – I mean, can you imagine how he's going to be in Oklahoma City? <laughs> I mean, after playing in L.A., I don't know, man. I feel bad. Well, it, let, me, let me ask you this. Is he just not an, a Los Angeles guy? Would he thrive better in a place like – St. Louis or Miami or, you know, someplace where either there's more of a, call it a Caribbean population or more of a singular baseball focus like a St. Louis where, you know, he's going to be the man in town and he's not going to just get lost in the shuffle or the bright lights. Ooh, I feel like he'd be marooned in St. Louis. Isn't, isn't LA like a, a good enough melting pot for pretty much anybody? Um, I yeah, I heard a really great debate on um, I watch MLB Network pretty much all day long, um, and they they were debating this. And Chris made a really good point on the potential talk about you know it's hard to come from another country and adjust to life here and adjust to the rigors of Major League Baseball. And the, I mean the guy just maybe couldn't mentally handle it. But how long's I mean, he been, I, I how long's he been here though? He's not a rookie. You're right. I mean, maybe he's a jerk. <laughs> well, I think That's that possibility. I don't know. I mean, this is what this is what makes me question a lot of things. When this kid came up, you know, he brought a spark to the Dodgers, yep. and he brought and he brought something to that team where they went on a run. Yes, swag. And, and he just brought something. He hustled. He, I mean, yeah. he ran in the walls, and and he did all that. And I don't know when that changed. And I think that was his game. I mean, his game was a hustle. And, and granted, he can hit the ball out of the ballpark, and he can hit for average, and we we don't know all the things, but hit the hustle he brought to the ballpark. I thought it was something special. Now, maybe mentally, you know, that drained him, and he just can't keep up with the the one sixty two of it, or. Like you said, maybe he's just a flat-out idiot. Is it crazy to say maybe the Dodgers ruined him by putting too many restrictions on him instead of letting him go out and play his game and be himself, tried to calm him down? Oh, Mr. Mister, let me be me over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's valid. You know? yeah, I guess, yeah, valid. it might be valid. Jen, what do you think? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that last part. Oh, the, and I'm, Sean, Sean this said... This is a bad time to lose you. No, no. I hear the winners and losers are. Sean said that... Uh, Sean wanted to know if, if you think that um, the Dodgers put too many restrictions on Puig. Didn't just kind of let him be himself as do, and do his thing. Well, clearly, I mean, Mattingly comes from that, like, Yankees pedigree that I turn – I'm snarling right now. You can't, you can't <laughs> see it. Um, where, like, the stuffed shirt – oh, and by the way, I think I should name another loser. That poor guy, Clint Frazier, had to cut his hair because of the damn Yankees. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so wait, who's who's the loser there? Clint Clint Frazier or the Yankees? What I said? Who's the loser there? Clint Clint Frazier, Clint Frazier or the Yankees? Clint. <laughs> we could we could go in, we could go into a big debate about the Yankees grooming policy being outdated, but oh, no, Johnny yeah, Johnny the, Damon didn't seem to have a problem with it when there were rings on his finger. Yeah, I mean it's like that in different <laughs> organizations. My best friend is in the Cardinals minor league system. And he's not allowed to have any facial hair at all, and his hair has to be a buzz cut. Is it the army? <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> All right, so Tommy, do you want to give your you want to give a couple winners losers, or do you want us to go the other direction? Well, I mean, I'll go I'll go one I'll go two winners. I mean, one winner I think if you want to look at it the other way and you lo- want to look at it for the future, which I absolutely despise, but you have to give the Yankees as a as a winner in terms of you know building towards the future and revamping a farm system that was, I mean I mean real bare that cover was bare. In, in mm-hmm. New York, and it makes me sick to know that they're rebuilding and they might be good again. Oh, and, and it's, <laughs> it hurts and it, me. Well, no, and it's weird because they have teams at Triple A and Double A that have unbelievable records, but they're playing way above their talent level. So, to your point, to restock that cupboard, I mean, you take these teams at Triple A and Double A in the Yankees organization that are already overperforming, and then you put that kind of talent on there. I actually have the Yankees as one of my winners as well. And I think you go. I think I go Rangers just because of what they were able to do one through nine in their lineup. You know, you have a, a World Series MVP. You know, at the top of your rotation, and you go one through nine. And I, and I still, I believe I'm actually changing my approach. I believe you got to out hit people to win in this game. You know, I, I know pitching. People say pitching wins in the postseason. You know, I think shutdown relievers win in the postseason. But if you can mash, you know, if Cubs can mash, and when, and when you can mash. And the Rangers, like the Rangers are obviously the AL winner, and then the, the Cubs are the NL winner. But the, both teams are now set up to be able to mash you. And, and I think when you bring that kind of fear in a lineup, I think that's what wins. I really do. I'm getting away from needing the one through five to be able to win a World Series. If you can hit and timely hits, you're going to win. And losers, I, you know. You got, a, you, got, you got any losers or just nobody coming to mind? I, you know, I think you could say – there's really not many. There's really not many losers, really. You know, we talked. She said the Reds already. Cleveland Indians thought they had Jonathan Lucroy. The says no. Oh, the Pirates is a great yeah, one. Yeah, but the, the Cleveland Indians get Andrew Miller. There's no way they could be losers on well, that. Well, Jen just said the Pirates. The uh, Pirates I, is the perfect one. I, I, that, that's a good one. That's a real good one. Sean, you have a couple winners. Any anything that wasn't discussed yet? I mean, no, because I thought the clear cut winner was the Texas Rangers. And like I said, like I just said, I think my loser would honestly be the Cleveland Indians thinking they were getting a stable catcher just to see him two days later agree to go to the Rangers, a team they're going to have to face in the playoffs. I mean, that's, that's, that's got to be a punch in the gut. All right. Well, I, I'm going to – I got a, some notes here that I'm going to refer to real quick because I have – Oh, sorry, real quick. Colorado is a clear-cut loser, loser at the deadline. Yeah. I mean, that's a big one, Terry. You got to move – I mean, I, listen. You can say you're three games out of the wild card, but but realistically, you got to move Carlos Gonzalez. Yeah, you got to you got to make the move at that when you can sell at a high point. And I think Colorado dropped the ball there. Yeah. So I I mean, Dora's on the DL now, and he might not be back. Yeah. Yeah, which kills their their little if they want to make the wild card. Which yeah. yeah so you know. my my three winners. We already talked about Texas and the Yankees for for obvious reasons. I got the Milwaukee Brewers, and not only do I have them, I have them as the biggest winner. They get Lewis Brinson and Luis Ortiz from the Rangers. They get Andrew Susak and Phil Beckford from the Giants. They get Aaron Wilkerson and Wendell Riho from the Red Sox. They give up two good players out of all that group, being um, Jonathan Lucroy, Jer- uh, Jeremy Jeffries. They give up Will Smith and Aaron Hill. These guys, eh, okay? They get back two players in the top 70 that were arguably one and two in the Rangers system. I mean, they get, they get Brinson and Ortiz. The only reason that they're one and two is because Mazar is already up. But in terms of guys that are still in the minors, they get Brinson and Ortiz. I mean, they fleece the Giants in the Will Smith deal. To get Andrew Susak as a catcher to replace Jonathan Lucroy is huge. And then to get Wilkerson and Rio for, and- for Aaron Hill, I mean, who's Aaron Hill? Like, I mean, just to, right. to get anything for that. So that would be the, the one big winner that I would have on top of the, the ones that we've already discussed. My losers, Jen, I'm going the, the, the Crosstown Chicago White Sox. I mean, they make one deal. They get Charlie. Oh, good. They, make, they, get Char, they get Charlie Tilson from the Cardinals for Zach Duke. They should have gotten a lot more for Duke. That's the only move they made. They had an all-out bidding war by all accounts, between the Rangers, the Red Sox, and the Dodgers for Chris Sale, and they didn't move him. And, I mean, if you want to talk about the Phillies being, you know, bad to worse for not moving Hellickson or or Velasquez, now, Tommy, I know that 
Chris Sale's a stud, but when you have teams that are in a bidding war for your ace and you mm-hmm. can't put a deal together, that's a tough one. Well, that's I, a bad organization. Yeah. <laughs> you got to move that guy right away. Right. I don't know. Especially and I think because that cat, the cat's out of the bag with that, and he was a, you know, looking like a malcontent. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was going to say. I think his clubhouse incident kind of cut those chances in half. Yeah, well, it's a bad joke, but uh. yeah, I, I, got, I got it. <laughs> Somebody got it. Raise your hand. I got it. So the the other big loser that I have, and this is a big fat F, would be the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. They get Jesus Castillo from the Cubs for Joe Smith, who you know, regardless of what Joe Smith did for the Cubs, we're going to look at the other side of this. Then they get Ricky Nolasco and Alex Meyer. Ricky Nolasco and who from the Twins? They dump Hector Santiago's contract. They give up Alan Busnitz. This organization, they would have been better off just not making a deal than making two bad (laughs) deals. I mean, and honestly, like... I I almost... Went to Trout. When's Trout season? Right, but I mean, that's the thing. (laughs) You're going to tell me that there's not another American League team that's on the cusp that wouldn't talk to you about pool holes? And there's there's not another team out there that would have given you five top 50 prospects for Mike Trout? I mean, come on. I might need a seven. I'm about to say, I might need more than that. <laughs> but, but, still, yeah. but still, but I almost wonder, going back to the Matt Klintak thing, bringing it full circle, Klintak came from the Angels. He obviously has seen from the inside what a bad organization looks like. Right. Do you think maybe he just sat pat this year because he's still trying to get his feet down on the ground, so to speak, and really kind of figure out what, position he wants to take with this group Mm -hmm. as opposed to trading for trade's sake yeah i mean i think gun shy comes around again Uh you know because it's first year in i think you get a a little gun shy on pulling triggers he is getting influenced by mcphail though that's why i'm a little more confident in clintac and his rookie being a rookie gm the fact that mcphail is kind of overseeing everything and in his ear i'm a little more okay with what clintac does and i'm i'm okay with mcphail in his ear I don't know if I'm okay with Pat Gillick still having influence. Right. I, I think it might be time for, for Mr. Gillick to finally, you know, if you want to be an advisor, be an advisor, that's great. But I, I think his, his tenure of influence should be over. Jen, any thoughts on that? You know, I have some thoughts about the Phillies right now. They have they chased Maslin yesterday and Cueto tonight, and they have a tie game right now. Oh, oh, they wow. came back. Big comeback. <laughs> I, I love it. We we I, I we don't have the we don't have the TV watch. on here in the studio, so you can just give us that score update, no problem. Ryan Howard's like four for four with a home run. Oh, oh wow. the piece. Of course, three day three days after the trade deadline, peace decides right. to get hot. Uh, <laughs> can you open that door? Is it snowing outside? Can can he, can we get him through waivers? Right. <laughs> Jen, real quick, bef- before we let you go, tell us what you're up to these days, where you're at. I know you got a ton of stuff going on with high school football season starting, so yeah. give, us, give us the lowdown on what's going on with you, and then we'll let you get back to the Phillies and, and probably bed, because I know you got a huge day tomorrow. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to put all the listeners to sleep after that lively discussion when I tell you what I'm up to, because... You know, honestly, my only qualifications for being here is of being an obnoxious Cubs fan and watching MLB Network all day and making comments at the TV. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're we're perfectly okay with job, that. <laughs> my primary job is to cover high school sports. Um, it's been a bit slow summer, but um, we really make a big, huge push. We have a, we have an online sports show. We we are a newspaper company, but we I mean I work strictly in video. I'm basically a broadcaster. I only my stuff not on TV. Um, it's called Game On, and, I mean, I am going to be, if you follow me on Twitter, you're going to mute me because I'm going to be complaining <laughs> about <laughs> my long days and the sweat and the heat and lugging my camera around now. Um, so, in the starting, you know, late August, we have a daily um, high school sports show called Game On. It covers all the local schools from Bristol to Saturday, Um and we're really kind of the only ones that do it. So I'm really proud of it. So we'll, we'll see you yeah. out at Conwell League in a few times this year then? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, the big story in high school football is that they're reclassifying the PIAA. You know, it's completely rehauling. So Thanksgiving games might be a thing of the past, but the, the Conwell League and Truman Thanksgiving game is always a treat. 
whenever I can make it over there. Awesome. Um, so I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't die. I. I mean, as far as we know, it's on the schedule for this year. So fingers crossed. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I really in the little school that could. I, I. I like those guys. So definitely, hopefully, I will see you over there. So I mean, I guess you're out at a different school every day then through August, shooting some things, interviewing stuff like that. Yeah, during two days. I mean, I, I've got to do a preview for all. We have 26 football teams that we cover. Wow. Um, so, yeah, two weeks to do it. So I, I'm kind of, by, you know, relaxing and biding my time right now. The, the stuff hits the fan on Monday. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I'm ready for football, and I'm ready for October baseball. Well, I'm glad, I'm, I mean. I'm glad we got you on before your schedule, schedule got way too hectic and – We'll have to do this again down the road. Thanks so much for being on with us. No, thank you so much. It was a lot of fun. Cool. Appreciate it. That's Jen Wilgus, Calkins Media, Bucks County Courier Times, Burlington County Times, Doylestown Intelligencer. Game on. (laughs) Jen, I'll be talking to you. Take care. They're all sleeping. They're sleeping now. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Jen. We appreciate it. All right. Have a good one. Bye. All right. So. We so got, we're like 15 minutes late for a break. <laughs> oh, that, that's fine. I'm not even concerned about all that. But no, I mean, that's, that's great insight. You know, I think you know she gave a little bit of both sides. You know, so maybe agreed a little bit with both of us here, and you know, but talked about you know contenders make deals at the deadline. You know, and you know, like she said, you don't have to hate. You know, you don't have to hate them not making a move, mm-hmm. but you know, you can dislike it a little bit. And oh you yeah. Can, and you can wonder why, you know, two of these guys are still on this roster. So, I mean, I'm not going to, you know, my stance stays the same. I, you know, I think you need to move both of them. And I don't know why you didn't. And we talk about gun shy, scared. You know, I don't know. You know, first time walking in high school, I don't know what the hell it is. But, you know, I think you got to, you know, if he came from the Angels organization, that, that actually scares me because, you know, <laughs> losing's contagious too. You know, I mean, we talk about winning being contagious. There's losing. And that makes me a little nervous. But, <laughs> you know, he's stocked and loaded. There's a lot of fish in the pond right. down there. So it's hard to mess it up. I was about to say, it would take a lot to, to ruin this. It would. It really would. It would take some Ed Wade shit <laughs> at the very beginning to ruin it. The king of the – Ed Wade. Ed Wade at the trade deadline was the king of the nothing move. Like the king of the nothing move. Like would make a move. Like you thought this thing could be good. And he would make, he would make one like little – Little move, and it was like the the smallest move possible. I'm gonna like, gonna trade you Bruce Ruffin for a minor league outfielder. Yeah, yeah, for some like 28 year old journeyman. <laughs> like, what are you doing, Ed? But that you know that that was Ed Wade. If you're just joining us, you can vote Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, HUD Radio is where you can find us. Do you agree with the Philly standing pad at the trade deadline? Let us know, yes or no. What we'll do on the other side is we'll get into some Eagles conversation, get deep into training camp here on Tom. Mike. I am. In the PM. Right here at A2DRadio.com. And we're also joined by Sean Radden, Rob Povey on the ones and twos. And this has been brought to you by the Sports Outlet for all your sporting needs. 703 Black Horse Pike, Glendora, New Jersey. 856-939-2030. On the web, sportsoutletinc.com. A2DRadio.com is sponsored by The Sports Outlet, located at 703 Black Horse Pike in Glendora, New Jersey. With over 40 years of customer experience, giving the latest in uniforms and equipment to sports enthusiasts of baseball, softball, football, basketball, hockey, soccer, and much more. Give them a call at 856-939-2030 or send them an email at sportsoutletnj at comcast.net or visit their website at www.sportsoutletinc.com. Dot com for all of your sporting needs.
get your skills in shape, then contact the Sconzano Sports Center, located at 5 Carnegie Plaza in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. You can give them a call at 856-889-3434 or visit them on the web at www.sconzanosports.com. John Sconzano offers individual, semi-private, and team training lessons in hitting, pitching, catching, outfield, along with turf rentals. The Sconzano Sports Center is equipped with a 31,000 square foot indoor facility, four batting cages, and a 4,000 square foot strengthening and conditioning room. So what are you waiting for? Contact the Sconzano Sports Center today. H2DRadio.com is proudly sponsored by Gibson Mayer LLC Certified Public Accountants. Gibson Mayer, located in Yardley, PA, is a leading accounting and business consulting firm with a proven track record of handling critical issues with expertise across many different industries, including construction, distribution, hospitality, manufacturing, real estate, service trades, merchandising, professional services, and professional athletes. Give them a call at 215-369-3300. That's 215-369-3300. Your initial consultation is always free. And if you tell them that Tom and Mike from AM and the PM sent you, you'll receive 15% off all income tax services completed by February 15th. That's Gibson Mayer LLC Certified Public Accountants, 215-369-3300. Or visit them on the web at www.gibsonmayer.com. That's GibsonMayor.com. Hey, do you consider yourself an ex-Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, or Jordan Spieth? Well, head on out on November 5th at Valley Brook Country Club in Blackwood, New Jersey for A2DRadio.com's first ever Real Talk Invitational. 125 per person to enter, teams up to four members, and it includes all you can eat and drink, and contests including longest drive, putting competition, closest to the pin, and the hole in one contest. Once again, it's November 5th at Valley Brook Country Club in Blackwood, New Jersey. The guys here at HBWare.com hope to see you there. Welcome back, Tom. Mike. I am. In the PM. Right here at A2DRadio.com. We are live from the BMW Atlantic City studios. You can find them on the web, BMWAtlanticCity.com. And every Wednesday night, we're brought to you by Gibson Mayor LLC, your certified public accountant. Find them on the web, GibsonMayor.com. Tom Arnone, joined by Michael Mataraki, Sean Radden, Rob What's Pogo up? on the ones and twos. we got a special guest coming in on our Eagles segment. His name's Dan Grimes. You can follow him at Nightmare Dan on Twitter. And we're going to get in a lot of Eagles talk here in a minute. But if you're just joining us, we started talking a lot of Phillies. We had Jennifer Wolgus on from the Bucks County Carrier Times. And our poll question, do you agree with the Phillies standing pad, the trade, trade, uh, trade deadline? Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, ATD Radio is where you can find us, yes or no. See, Mike, we all make mistakes. <laughs> Dan, welcome. How you guys doing? Uh, never had a bad day in my life. <laughs> Good. Had a few, actually. <laughs> all right, King. <laughs> had a couple. <laughs> had a couple. So we're going to get into some, you know, training camp position battles and you know, we'll see where you guys want to want to start. I like to actually, if you guys want, we start at the wide receiver position, and that is brought to you by Liberty Event Rentals for all your party needs. Two six seven three one four seven three six eight on the web, libertyeventrentals.com. So, gentlemen, start at the wide receiver position, and you know, obviously Jordan Matthews. We know, you know, number one, obviously. Who would you guys, as of right now, go to so far in training camp? From what I'm hearing about productivity so far in training camp, it's Chris Givens. Yeah, that's what I've been hearing I as mean, well. I'm not necessarily happy about that, but, I mean, if this guy could come in, he has played with Bradford before in St. Louis, and he said from what he sees, Bradford it looks like a totally different quarterback. But I'm not necessarily confident if they start week one and we're saying Chris Givens is the second best receiver on his roster. Yeah, I'm hearing that Reuben Randall's really, really impressive. 
maybe just needed a change of scenery, you know, getting away from the Giants, getting away from the shadow of playing with Odell Beckham Jr. Mm -hmm. So I'm just hoping that he can come in, make a big impact, step up to the plate, and uh, help the team out. Uh, to me, I, I kind of – I'm very much in agreement with Dan. I think the guy that we need to have in that spot is Nelson Aguilar. Right. But I think the guy who, who probably has the inside track right now based on the fact that he's looked better in this camp than he ever looked with the Giants is Reuben Randall. Well, I mean, Reuben Ma- Randall's shown he can make plays. I mean, he's only 25 years old. Mm-hmm. You know, you talked to two years ago, he can make plays in this league. And he found the end zone eight times last season. Yeah, he did. And, and, and that's a big thing that we've always had issues here in Philadelphia is red zone, right? And then we get Doug coming back in. We've known – Andy's red zone, red zone woes. We know Chip Kelly's red zone woes. I mean, it feels like it's just a stigma here in Philadelphia mm-hmm. that we can't score in the red zone. But again, so that you know that's big, you know. But the, like you said, Mike, to your point, Nelson Aguilar, you know, as your as your fourth guy so far in camp, and Josh Huff, Huff is your fifth. That's a problem in drafting. You know, yep. that's an issue with drafting because you know I, I don't know, you know, and the, the fix or our Philly fan talked about this earlier. And the question was, you know, who, who's more to blame through this whole Eagles process, right? Is it Chip Kelly, Howie Roseman, Jeffrey Lurie? And I'm going to tell you it's not Chip Kelly. And people are going to tell me it's crazy. It was Howie Roseman and Jeffrey Lurie. I they agree. messed up this franchise. They're, they're the ones who pulled the strings at the top of the organization. This is why you let, allow talent to walk out your door. And, and you know what? I stuck up for the Deshaun Jackson move. Your hands were tied. When you talk about gang affiliations right. and you talk about billion-dollar companies, the first thing you're going to do is react and, and go. Fine, but but with the McCoy, you know, let Mac one go. I mean, these kinds of guys need to be need to stay here. Locked up. You know, you you were winning games. You know, and I, and I think the big thing was, you know, Chip never got his quarterback per se. But I blame it on the structure of the organization. To this day, there's still no VP of player personnel. That's a problem, gentlemen. Oh, you you and that's I that's a major issue. You you and I have had that discussion in depth, and we understand that that's a problem. I'm sorry, I went off track. No, no, a no, bit no, from no, the, no, no. It's, battles, it's but, perfectly but warranted. This, this is a battle in terms of the yep. structure of the organization. But I, I mean, sticking with that wide receiver position, though, one of the guys that you and I talked about specifically two weeks ago, and quite frankly. If Josh Huff never plays another down in an Eagles uniform, I will throw a freaking party in this studio. You could go with Jordan Matthews, Nelson Aguilar, Chris Givens, Ruben Randall, and if your number five is Byron Marshall, I'm a happy camper. I'm glad you just said that, Mike, because I was actually yeah. I was going to say Byron Marshall is the complete wild card in this whole thing. I don't I don't think he's going to bump out one of them running backs for a roster spot, but he's a guy that he can do too much to where – you got to keep him on his roster if he shows he can produce. And apparently the coaches have been in love with him so far in camp. He's shown his playmaking ability in the open field. We, we talked about it two weeks ago. He's the only player in Pac-10 or Pac-12 history to rush for 1,000 yards one year and come back and have over 1,000 receiving yards the next. The, the guy, when you get the ball in his hands, is a weapon. Right. He needs to be on this team somehow. And piggybacking off of what you said about Josh Huff, I cannot stand him. <laughs> I, I, I hope he's off our team. I hope he's out of Philadelphia. He, he can move away from the country. I don't care. He can't play football. I'm sick and tired of seeing these people on Twitter and calling into radio stations saying, oh, we'll give him a chance. He shows flashes. He shows flashes here and there. With Chip Kelly, you see when he gets the ball, he can make some plays. No, he stinks. Well, he fumbles the ball every time he gets the ball in his hands, too. I mean, <laughs> the list goes on on Josh Huff brain dead right. plays. He touches it. His touchdown to fumble ratio is, like, even for his career. Well, you're not right. going to – listen, <laughs> at the end of the day, if you're smart, right, and you're a smart GM, you've seen what Josh Huff is. Right. If he's struggling in camp again like he is dropping passes again, you take the chance on a wild card like Byron Marshall. You just take your chances because he's not going to be worse than Josh Huff. And when you're talking about your fifth wide receiver anyway, if yeah. it gets that far down, you're in trouble to begin with. Absolutely. So – you need one through three, one through four to produce, and you need your one through three. And if that's, you know, Matthews, Randall, uh, Givens, then, then so be it. You know, but Nelson Aguilar, another guy who needs to wake up. Yeah. I mean, the only ever packed 10, packed 12 great wide receiver was Keyshawn Johnson. I, I'll wait for another one because we might never talk again. And I we might spend <laughs> the rest of the night quiet. And I hope that Nelson Aguilar is mentally okay from that whole thing that happened. Well, this is, yeah, we it, start it's, dancing. It's it, 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 he should never put himself in that situation. I get it. He's a young kid. He's going to do what he's doing. But I, I just hope that it doesn't affect him and he can come into training camp, put everything aside, and just focus on football. See, Clearly, Dan listened to the show two weeks ago and did his homework. I like it. See, I look, I look <laughs> at the Nelson Aguilar situation positively because last year, what was the biggest problem with the Eagles receivers? 
couldn't catch. Yes. Now in the offseason, you got Aguilar catching cases and stuff. So now hopefully it trains that it carries over to football. At least he's catching. <laughs> and he had that high ankle sprain, too. So I'm hoping that. Yeah, I, I, I don't count him out. The, the I don't only, count him out. The yet. only thing he's catching right now re- requires Valtrex to get rid of. So no, <laughs> I, don't know if I don't know if that's the kind of stuff you want to be catching. No, but Frank Reich did speak today, and he said they have big plans for Nelson Aguilar this year and that they're going to use his talents to the best of their abilities. So well, Nelson now Aguilar he got to play the waiting game. for himself. <laughs> right. the, you know, is the next right. question to that one. All right. So where do you want to go now? You want to get a defensive side of the ball, or you want to stay in the uh, on the offense? Oh, well, I mean, we could stay. We could stay on the offense. I mean, where, where do you want to go after this? You want to look. The list goes you on. Want, you want to go to that sort of that combination fullback tight end thing that we got going on because it se- sounds like there's a lot of whispers going on there. Uh, apparently. The coaching staff is very much in love with this kid, Chris Pantel. Mm -hmm. And they're saying that he could very well unseat Trey Burton as the starting fullback, which means that Burton then kind of by default becomes the third tight end. But then there's other tight ends on the roster, uh, specifically uh, this kid, Gordon Dillon, and then there's another kid, MJ McFarland, and... Apparently, they like both of them. They're both, you know, college free agents, but they've both shown flashes so far. And, you know, Tommy and, you know, Sean, I, yeah. I know you're, you're in real tune quick, with this, but I mean, quick. this is, this is, you know, Trey Burton's a guy that we've thought has just kind of been, you know, sort of hidden and not really given a shot. And now they're talking about, you know, competition for him, maybe not even being on the roster. Well, Chris Pantel, can we stop him for a second? I mean, the fact that they, this guy's – first off, you're not going to have a 6'5 fullback. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so if the Eagles are in love with this guy's their fullback, here we go again because That's, you're not going to have a 6'5 well, I mean, fullback. You, you Trey, ain't Trey see, Burton's 6'3". But you've got to go out and get a fullback yeah, then. You if ain't going to see gonna, the running back Hold, line, hold the <laughs> hell on, gentlemen. This, now we're back to the same idiotic, idiotic things that we dealt with in years past here with this franchise. What the hell are we doing? You can't want to run an I formation type set without an effing fullback. I agree. And it's, you can't just oh, well, oh, we'll put a tight end there. No, no you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> you got to go get a guy who specializes in being a fullback or you can't run it. Right. You can't run it. It's just like you can't run Chip Kelly's offense without a mobile quarterback. It doesn't work. It doesn't work unless you – the only – the best his offense work, yeah, you hit – Foles worked a little bit, but under Vic is when it worked. Because you had to respect the run. And if you, if, listen, they always say, well, if the, if the running back was lined up left, you knew it was going right. Well, no shit. Because you spoke <laughs> that the quarterback had the option to keep it or not. That's all purpose of that if offense. Every single person in the stadium, on each team, everyone watching the game knew that Sam Bradford wasn't moving. Exactly. So it's tough to run that offense. But now we're back to, you know, don't get stubborn, Doug. You're not in a position to get stubborn in your ways. So you need to make an adjustment in your offense to come into the season without a fullback. You can't just plug and play at this level. You just well, can't well, do it. Well, and the kicker was they signed a fullback in the offseason. And cut him two and, days and, later. And then, yeah, and they <laughs> cut him two days later. Like, what are you doing? Yeah, That's I mean, unbelievable. I'm, I'm hoping, Mike, you know, Sean, Dan, I hope that they go away from the fullback and just realize that, you know, we're not going to – You don't gonna, have one. <laughs> you, don't need, you don't need to necessarily go fullback. You can put a tight end in motion. You know, there's, there's other ways you can do it and get creative. These guys should be smart enough to do, and I can just say that right here. Oh, either, you know either, what I mean? They should be smart enough to be able to do that and either, make adjustments. Either, either that or they're going to be scouring the waiver wire as camp goes on to right. see if there's fullbacks that get cut from other teams that might be a fit for True, the system. Not, I mean, there's not many out there. This no, is the problem. You're right. You're, we're going back in time, Dan, Sean. We're going back in freaking time here. All college is spread offense. There's no more freaking fullbacks anywhere in the world. you got to get away from oh, that. Every, you, know, you know, that's um, what everything's going to every, spread, running, yeah. run and every, shoot. Every fullback in the NFL – was either a college tight end or a college linebacker. They convert. Right. Because you're right. To your point, no colleges even use a fullback anymore. No, not anymore. They, now they can if they pass. want If they want a fullback, they just find their skinniest tight end or their fattest running back. Remember in the days, you, you know, teams would take fullbacks like way back in the day, like, you know, you know, in the third – Second, third round in draft. No, you could go back to they the were assets. Go back, go back to the Cleveland Cleveland Browns heyday. I can't believe I just said Cleveland Browns heyday, but you had <laughs> you know you had Kevin Mack and Ernest Biner running fullback and tailback, and they were both thousand yard rushers, you know, in the same season, and that was probably the last time you really had a, you know, a fullback who was an impactful ball carrier. I can't disagree with that. I mean, maybe Mike Allscott. With the Buccaneers, I mean, he's a guy that they gave it to on short yardage. 
He was a decent runner. Yeah, I but mean, you haven't the running back. But I that, mean, the that run- was like a two headed monster. Yeah, even Wark done. Yeah, I mean Larry like, Centers was, was th- like a different yeah. you know animal altogether. Where you know he's a dual threat type guy who you know played fullback for a while for the Cardinals. So you know there's different ways. Yeah, if you use your fullback that, that he's a pass catcher out of the backfield, and you can use him not only to block but to bring something to the table. But if you just have like some some big guy. Like I just don't think at six five you can you can block in that kind of traffic as a fullback. I right. would think you'd want somebody more to six one, six you know, maybe six foot six more one. Compounded. And, yeah, it gets a low and, and can has a low center of gravity going through the hole. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know. I mean that's just my opinion. So that that's gonna be something to, to look into as the season goes on and then, well preseason and see what they do. Because they might come I out and just go single that. back. You know, or put tight ends in motion. So Hopefully we're not talking about fullback. <laughs> yeah. if, if, we're, <laughs> you know I mean? if we're talking about fullbacks as the season goes on, there's a problem. Mm-hmm. Big problem. Well, let's let's why we're why we're on the offensive side of the ball real quick. I, I want to talk quarterbacks with you gentlemen for a minute because the you know, five will always love you. And, <laughs> and guess what? I'll always love five. I don't give a rat's ass what anybody else says. Nothing wrong but, with that. But at the end of the day, you know, he took a little shot. On if you're going to draft Wentz, you should never sign Bradford. And to be honest with you, I completely agree with him. Your guys Oh, thoughts. yeah, no, yeah, I agree. But I, at the time they signed Bradford, I don't think they realistically thought they were going to be able to get up there. Well, listen then. If that's the case, this is where the, this bad communication in this organization is at its finest right now. Right, because you got to you, know. You're, you're you gotta, hot over this. You got to foreshadow. <laughs> you you, you, you were, have to foreshadow this kind of shit. You were on fire with that last week with the just the. I don't think you have a problem with the players as much as you do the front office. No, right I now. like this roster. You want my opinion? I like the roster, but I, I hate Pro this Football front. Focus said it's the fifth most talented roster in the NFL. When you have a, two jackasses running the show, <laughs> it's going to fail. Jeffrey Lurie is reluctant now. Reluctancy is the word I'm going to use from here on out. He's been burned. It's like dating a girl. Well, he's, he's had these issues. But it's like, you know, a little hit and run on the Walt Whitman. But that, we're not here to talk <laughs> about Jeff. But, no, you know, he, you know, he got burned so bad by Chip Kelly and it not working. The worst thing for the Eagles was starting out hot on that Monday night game right. under Chip Kelly because uh, now yep. the whole national media saw it and everybody saw it when he got crowned. And, you know, he got – I think he was in almost like a, you know, pulling back and forth in two different relationships between Howie Roseman and Chip Kelly. And that ruined and divided this franchise. And, you know, I, th- that's my issue. But on the McNabb thing, what do you think, Dan? Uh, just <laughs> – he just needs to shut up sometimes. Oh, he's that's probably the, drinking. Well, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. ain't shutting up anymore. He just got hired to do uh, – Broadcast games for ESPN Radio today. Oh. He wants us to love him so bad. He wants to, him, us to accept him as a Philadelphia guy and whatever. But he, he keeps doing stuff like this. It's just so off-putting. just puts a bad, sour taste in my mouth. I don't want to hear him talk. But whatever. I, it, I'm, I'm over him. I don't need him to talk. I don't need him to do anything. He's a great quarterback for our organization. His three greatest quarterback to ever play for our franchise. Just shut up. <laughs> oh, see, Al, here's what's, what scares me. I'm going to come right back to Dan and Sean on this one. You got the biggest eagle hater out there, just shy of Merrill Hodge, in Heath Evans mm. from NFL Network, and Heath Evans is predicting the birds to go 11 and five. That yeah. scares me because it means there's either a lot more talent than we think, or they're going to completely flip that thing and go five and 11. Trust me, I swear, I've talked to Heath Evans. He does not hate the Eagles. He hates. Chip Kelly. That's what oh, I was just about to say. It was the chip hates effect. Chip Kelly. It was the chip effect. He gives it to the Niners fans right now. All, all, all of them coming back at him and forth and Twitter and saying, oh, you're just a hater. You're just a hater. Well, he was right. We didn't like to hear what he was saying when he was coming at the Eagles because we're just all wrapped up in all oh, 10 and 6, 10 and 6. We're going to do this. <laughs> we're going to do that. But he was right. <laughs> I said this on Great to Disagree the other night, and, and Rob was here, and I said, you can't. You know, it was all about having nice guys in the locker room. Well, you know, during my Thanksgiving dinner, you know, I don't want guys in my locker room that are going to serve you first. You know right. what I mean? I want guys you want that, are, that aren't going around serving you. I want guys that are going to go eat. rip a leg off that, that turkey and eat it first before anybody else gets there. Like, screw grandma, I'm going to screw everybody else because I'm a dog. I'm an animal. This sport's not built for the, the, the kind right. and nice of heart. This is built for animals. This is why these guys have issues off the field because they're, they, their mindset is, a, is one way and, it, and it's hard all day. I want guys with a track record. Right. I want guys who've been through a couple things in their life like Tyrone Matthew and, and yep. guys like that. I want Jaylen guys. Mills. Yeah, I want. Ty, you mean 
Tyron Matthew rewarded with a huge yeah. contract well, today? He, listen, we talked about him last so. week, too. You know, listen, we, we talk about it, but that's the kind of guys you want. You want dogs out there. Right. You don't want yeah. nice guys. I hunted, what did this nice locker room do for this organization, Dan, over the last three years? It's a nice and kind nothing. locker room. Yeah. I, I hated the culture thing. You know, that everyone thinks and that football players. And then Jeffrey Lurie, 53 angry men. Yeah. <laughs> everyone thinks that football <laughs> players should be, like, these role models to the kids and, like, no. Oh, they, they're not nice right, guys. It, right. Play football. I played football my whole life through high school and college. To play football, you have to have a mentality. I, I, I just hate this guy in front of me. Right. I want to beat him up. I want to beat his ass all game. That's the kind of mentality you need. Yeah, you and need then those need. dogs – to, in your locker room and on your right. team. And they the need medicinal marijuana for after the game. <laughs> and this is where we're going here. This is where I'm setting it up for, right, Robbie? Like, <laughs> puff, like puff Sunday. Give. You know, but, but listen, because at the end of the day, the whole problem with the NFL that we can get in you know, at another time is the prescription painkillers. Mm-hmm. And, and you, have a, you have access to something else that's, that's starting reports are coming out that it helps with CTA. Uh, but, but at the end of the day, how do you keep these guys who are geared up, like Dan said, to go – Right at your throat to turn it off after game day. It's almost impossible. It so happen. the only way, let, let him be Le'Veon Bell and Martavis Bryant. Mm-hmm. Let him puff a little bit Damon Stott and my Rashid Wallace style <laughs> and Portland back I would, Here's what I want to know, Allow these guys to stay in the confines of their home. Let it help their body. Oh, listen, I'm not an advocate on marijuana. But if you, but I am. Th- me too. <laughs> I didn't want to be the guy to say it, but hell yeah, I am. But if you – listen, there's strands to help all kinds of different things. Right. And yeah. there's strands to help your body. There's been proof coming out, more and more research – that it helps with CTA. I mean, this is helpful, but this league, because it's in cahoots with a billion-dollar pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical companies, will never change it. And I'm just going to say it's going to ruin the, the in the next 10 years. The NFL will have their, their balls sued off. Mark it down. No, well, here's, Mark here's, it down. It's coming. You're right. It's coming because they're turning blind eyes. You're right, it. but here's what I want to know. Sorry, for, I don't know where uh, the hell we're going. We go off Mar- the rails all the time. <laughs> Martavis Bryant and Le'Veon Bell, what the hell are they growing out in Pittsburgh? I mean, what that, are they doing? Growing it out of the side of a mountain? I like guess it, so, but they, it's helping their 40. LeGarrette <laughs> Blunt, he was there too. <laughs> it's helping their 40. Well, LeGarrette Blunt, no pun intended? Right. No, I mean, them, two, <laughs> them two were smoking on the way to the boss. I mean, there's not <laughs> enough acts in the world, babe. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't be puffing <laughs> on the way to the boss. You're yeah. about to be around your whole team. Well, you, you, you were talking about, you know, certain guys, and I, I heard the name come down from the other side of the table with Sean. Let's go to the defensive side of the ball real quick. Which I love. The guy, well, I, guy I, love. I told you about two weeks ago, I'm telling you right now, Eric Rowe is not on this team. Jalen Mills is taking his spot. I'm, I'm sorry for a second. That's a fucking problem. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to put it out there right now. That is a problem. And this is, this is here we go. Here we go. Because this is what this is what Brian Colangelo didn't do is show you how big his dick is. You understand what I'm saying to you right now? And this is now Howie Roseman and Doug Peters are coming out, and look how big my sack is. And we both know how small they both are, okay? (laughs) So this is the kind of shit I'm talking about that hurts organizations. Eric Rowe can play in this league, okay? I know Jalen Mills can play. Jalen Mills is on my football team. But you're going to tell me, you're going to sit here and tell me, Ja'Cory Shepard, Denzel Rice, stop it. You go Leotis McKelvin, Eric Rowe. Nolan Carroll, Jalen Mills, and if you need a fifth, then figure it out then. But them four are on this football team, and if they cut him, oh, I'm telling you. I'll be pissed. I'm telling you, Michael. I said a lot of inappropriate things through that segment <laughs> that could be part of the best now, of the I week. Will say That's that. okay. So you can put that on the best of. <laughs> I will say this. A guy, a guy that I know who uh, grew up writing, he's uh, in college for writing now. He just got a job. He writes for USA Today. He covers the Eagles. I'm real close with him. We talk a couple times a week, and I asked him straight up last week. I was like, dude, are you serious? You really think Eric Rowe's not making this roster? And he said, no. People are getting it blown out of proportion. He said, Eric Rowe's making the roster, but I will say this. It's going to be hard for him to see playing time. Well, and here's, I think here's the problem, though. I think the wild card in all of this is Ron Brooks. I think this is a guy that they brought in from Buffalo mm-hmm. thinking he was going to be their number five corner yep. and their number five safety and a special teamer. And he's winning a starting job. That, yeah, he's so, starting a nickel so, right now. So what? Well, no, he's he's actually number two. He's number two, and then what's happening is in the nickel package, they're sliding him inside, and then they're rolling Mills and Nolan Carroll, Denzel Rice, Eric Rowe. They're rolling all these guys through, and I think he's the problem here because if you're going to start Leotis McKelvin and Ron Brooks, they're sold on Mills, obviously. 
you know, Nolan Carroll, you spent a lot of money on. He's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. So then it comes down to a battle between Eric Rowe, Denzel Rice, and Ja'Cory Shepard for your number five. Another name uh, no one's mentioned yet who's having a really good camp is uh, the guy Aaron Grimes from the CFL. From the CFL, yeah. Lighting it up in camp this year. Can I, can I tell you guys something now? I this you is why tell I, us whatever you want. I think we made this mistake <laughs> with the with the with the camp stuff, right? And preseason. Not to not to this not to yeah. your point. Just in general, like and I think we all do, me and me included, is that we can't look at this. How do guys translate on tape? Right? How do guys mm-hmm. translate on Sunday? We've seen Eric Rowe go against legitimate competition. Right. We've seen him perform and we've seen him as a rookie get burned at times. Yeah. But we've seen him out there and we know we can bring Denzel Rice stinks. Yeah, no. He stop stink. it. You know, Jacory Shepard, stop it. I-, I got no time for that. You know, uh, Aaron Grimes, your point, just, just go away. You know, all the rest <laughs> of them, Randall Evans, go away. You know, they can all go away. So if, if you're keeping five, your five better be McKelvin, you know, Carol, it's, it's Mills, Kelvin, Carol, Rowe, Brooks. and Brooks. Yeah. Done. Right. If I, I'm going I'm to I'm lose my shit. I'm going to lose my <laughs> shit. I really am. I hate Howie Roseman. What a passion. Sean, the, the day after final cuts, we're going to be in this studio scooping him up <laughs> off the floor. And Marcus Smith, if they don't pull this move, too, and they get uh, cute again. Oh, Marcus, my God. I Marcus Smith will get double digit sacks this year. Write it down. Mark <laughs> my word. No, I, no, no. He's, I, doubled, he's, at, least, I he's at least seven or eight. He's I'm about to say, I don't, I don't know about seven double eight. digits. Seven or eight. Write it down. He's He's going to. Definitely exceed a lot of people's expectations who wanted to write him on. First of all, he's a guy that's a co- an edge pass rusher, and you have my man trying to drop in the coverage. Yeah, it's not who that's him not and, his game. Him and Barry <laughs> Carey and Brandon Graham, that's not who they are. That's why, right. you know, Brandon Graham's numbers went down last no, year, I, too. I, These guys aren't built for three four. Brandon, I, Brandon I, Graham is a very, very underrated player. No, he yeah, is. absolutely. But I, he, the, the, Tommy and I talked about this right when they hired Jim Schwartz as the defensive coordinator. The odd man out in all this could wind up being Connor Barr. That's what I, absolutely. Because he's not a hand-in-the-dirt pass rusher. Mm-hmm. And, and if but he could, if, st- he could still do it oh he, he could still do it there's yeah. not a question about it but I think what you're going to see is you're going to see Connor Barwin playing a lot of first and second down and in third down situations you're going to see your Vinnie Curry's your Marcus mm-hmm. Smith's well, your Brandon Graham's you're going to see guys that are strictly 100% full on full steam ahead pass rushers I think when you give the kid a chance to put his hand in the dirt and say go you know one trick hey go get and I think he has an athletic ability, Vinny Carey included, Brandon Graham, the three of them, have the athletic ability to go get the quarterback. That's why I think you're going to see some progress, which is easy to have progress when you stunk. But you're going to see progress from Marcus Smith because when you saw him put his hand in the dirt a little bit last year, you seen a little bit of a burst. Uh-huh. Now, you didn't see it a lot because he didn't play a lot. He was buried. Because one, like Sean said, he wasn't built to play the three, four outside linebacker and cover. He's built to go get the quarterback. And guys who have a, that athletic ability, and, and bring that to the table can cause some ruckus in this league. Right. We've seen it. And when you have four guys that can go in and out and you have that kind of – you're that deep where you can rotate like that, these guys are going to get a lot of opportunities and they're going to be fresh. That's why I say, you know, I, this guy's not – I'm not talking Pro Bowl Marcus Smith getting cute like that, but I think he if he has a – Strictly as a guy to go get the quarterback, he can be successful in this league. Guys, I, I just got to throw this out real yeah. quick because we were talking about Chip Kelly a minute ago. Shefty just tweeted – 49ers have agreed to a four-year extension with linebacker Navarro Bowman worth $11 million a year, $20 million guaranteed. Best, best in football. But, best in uh, football. Oh, yeah. hold on, he had three years left on the current deal, so he's now locked up for seven years. Well, you know, he's a beat. Listen, he's Maybe a it lowered the cap pair or something. Yeah, I don't it's possible. Know. I mean, Let me tell you, San Francisco 49ers, they better start Colin Kaepernick. I mean, they better. Oh, yeah, Kaepernick. that's they, not even a question. If, if, listen, they, listen, this kid. That is it, the quarterback oh, for Chip Kelly's oh, offense. Oh, listen, he's going to be successful there. I'm telling you. If Kaepernick's head's right and he can get Kaepernick to fit in I'm right I'm going to cut his, my head off. But that's but, what I mean, too, but this is us. This is what he, Dan, this is what happens here. Yeah, you know this. Know, know. Guys go other places and are successful. I smell it. I have to freaking smell it. That the Big Air is going to get something special from this guy because he has a perfect quarterback right. cry. on the system. That's what I'm upset. Cry. I'm tired of getting guys going <laughs> elsewhere. I just I could see them winning like – Dude, like three or four, five games to and getting the first pick. Yeah, Sean Watson, and it's over. Oh my God, right he has down. his guy, multiple Super Bowls, and <laughs> I'm jumping <laughs> off the wall. <Walt> women, <laughs> all the gays are happy in San Fran. <laughs> that that was my biggest thing when I saw Chip. Went, Nobody cares about football in San Fran. <laughs> when I saw Chip went to the 49ers, I was like, All right, now it's put up or shut up. This is the first time you're going to see what Chip Kelly's offense can actually do with a quarterback that's tailor-made for his system. Now it's put up or shut up. But then, Mike, then he goes, oh, well, 
Wayne Gabbert's fighting for the job. What, Chip? I, again, is this you showing us how big your no, thing is? No, this is. I mean, come no, on. No, this is. This Stop is, it. No, this is the classic Chip mindfuck. Yeah. That's, that's another F bomb. That's yeah, three weeks fine. in a row. That's fine. But this is this is the classic Chip Kelly mindfuck. He wants Colin Kaepernick <laughs> to fight. I, no, I just repeated it. Come on. I know. We always do this. <laughs> on, on Sunday, we just throw up how many we said. A deuce. We keep track. A deuce. Um, but no, this is, this is Chip Kelly making Colin Kaepernick earn the job. And, and he's doing it through this, the reverse psychology of you have to beat out Blaine Gabbert. There's not a snowball's chance in hell that Blaine Gabbert is the starting quarterback of the 49ers come week one. Everybody knows it. But Chip's going to play the game. And he's going to make Kaepernick beat him out. Chip played that game all the time, the mental game. He's playing it with Colin Kaepernick, who's not really all mentally tough. Yeah, he's not the brightest, you know, that's, uh, that's the, that's brightest the bulb on the Christmas tree. And that was the problem with Chip. He could not relate to any of the players. He drove them away with his personality. He said things that just made you say, like, what the hell are you even talking about? And he's going <laughs> to do this with Colin Kaepernick. I hope he sabotages the whole thing. Listen, I'm a problem. I'm not going <laughs> to lie to you. I fell for it. Man. I, did too. I, think I still have. Because I still think that offense can be Tommy, extremely no, successful no, in this, this league. This whole city if ran fell the right for way, it. though. But I still believe, like, all things being equal, you have Michael Vick. Mm-hmm. I say Michael Vick Falcon days in this type of offense. Unstoppable. Come on, gentlemen. Unstoppable. It's lights out. But he gives away all the talent. Around well, I don't think it was him. This is what this no, is the yeah, problem. No, yeah, no, yeah. I, but I, I think, think this was because, Howie Roseman. Yeah, I don't blame Chip. I, I think it was Howie Roseman, Dan. I, but <laughs> back to the point on who you blame most. Like so, you know, it's all it's all of them. It, it's all of them. They they allowed Chip c- to come in here, right? Okay, and so Chip has problems with wait, maybe LeSean McCoy's attitude and whatever. And they had a tremendous c- success with that running due to LeSean McCoy. That line wasn't as great as everyone thought it was. I guarantee you, I think. I guarantee you that LaShawn McCoy made up for a lot of their mistakes. And he, drove, and he drove them away and looked at what we got next. We got DeMarco Murray. <sighs> Don't do it. Yeah. Mm. How'd that go? Don't do it. Not I hope well. that Tommy, it's, he, he drives yeah. away. The, but you're, I mean, God, what you guys are saying is all valid. But here, this is the thing. Up until the Eagles lost three in a row in late November, early December of year two, everyone in this town was in love with this mm-hmm. guy. I mean, this was this was a full blown gonna put a ring on the finger and marry this guy Rip down the Rocky statue. Love affair. Well, this is the and, problem. And, and then right? they hit that three game losing skid in in late November, early December of year two. They got eliminated from the playoffs, and then shit started hitting mm-hmm. the wall. When you're a head football coach for any team, hence Rex Ryan, and you're bigger than the football team. You're not going to be successful. Right. Uh, you're just not. It's not a shot at Chip Kelly because I don't think Chip ever made it about Chip. He just was a polarizing figure. Yeah, I think it just happened. That's the way it went. That's just the way it went down for us, and, and that's what screwed us. But you know, I think yeah, the dance point you can blame all three, you know, or you can just look at the head of the, the whole structure and Jeffrey Lurie. Blame him the most. You know, and, and mm-hmm. for him the the, the wow Howie Roseman, the wow that snake that's. That slimy snake that, that roamed the hallways there, and to allow that kind of problem to, to, to surface, to allow that to surface, is strictly on the owner of this organization See, no, to I, allow that. When you hire Chip Kelly, if they two can't work together, you spend a lot of money on Chip Kelly, brother. You spend a lot of money. You, then Howie Roseman's got to go. That's mm-hmm. Well, here's the thing. And, and that's, that's that simple. That is like getting a divorce and living in the house with your ex-wife or your ex-husband. Yeah, like she sleeps you in don't, the, the guest room. Yeah, but if you don't think that that ex-wife <laughs> or ex-husband is going to sabotage your next relationship, right. you got another thing coming. And that's what happened. I think a lot of these draft picks were, were you know, I can't even tell you were, were Howie or, or Chip or who knows who drafted these guys. So there's just no way of knowing all this mm-hmm. because there was, again, no VP of player personnel. They still don't have one. They, they came out. Should have been Jaws. Yeah, you thought it would be, you know, <laughs> Jaws. But still, so it's a structure issue and the lack of communication in the structure that killed it. And it, it, they better get it right now. Yeah, they better. I, it, Jeffrey Lurie created a bad situation when Chip Kelly went right to him and said, I can't work with this guy. And then Jeff had to make the decision to say, all right, Howie, you're gone. But you know what? You're not really gone. Just go out in the corner for a little bit. Let me see how this plays out. <laughs> That's where my problem is. That's why I don't blame Chip because, first of all, Chip was not the first guy in Philly that thought Howie Roseman was ass. Uh, yeah. that, there's right. been people. Bucky Brooks was on ESPN. Like, I've been there. It ain't a good situation. Like, I want to know. I think Howie Roseman saw Jeff Lurie kill somebody. 
Yeah. And he's keeping it a secret. Like, you remember Ray Donovan when the FBI agent was, like, having threesomes? I was right? hearing people saying they're lovers. You know what I mean? I feel like that's it. I feel <laughs> it like they have, be. like, threesomes on the side. <laughs> it might be. Like either, Jeffrey's younger wife, either, Howie's either, banging either that, her. Either that or Howie hooked Jeff up with his hot young Asian wife. That's what, yeah. It was that. It maybe, <laughs> All maybe. right, real quick, guys. We got, we got one more to talk about, and it's a quick one. Quick one-word answer. Kicker. Sturgis, Sturgis or Parky? Sturgis. Parky. Parky. Uh, I'll go Parky. All right. Now watch. Sturgis is going to get it. I want it to be Parky, but I think Sturgis is going to win the job. Look, man, Caleb Sturgis couldn't cut it in Miami where the kicking conditions are perfect, like, all the time. I don't know. I mean, right, we'll, we'll see. Too. I just don't know if Parky's leg's ever going to be the same. Uh, that, that, it's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, Mr. Arnone, do we want to sneak in our second break, come back and wrap it up? Yeah, we can do that. We'll sneak in our second break. This is Tom. Mike, I am in the PM. Right here at HDRadio.com. We're also joined by Sean Radden and Dan Grimes. Night, and, Nightman Dan. And we're talking a lot of Eagles training camp right now on the other side. We'll come back, finish off talking Eagles camp, and wrap up the show for tonight. And it's been brought to you by BMW of Atlantic City. This month, they've challenged their sales team. They must sell 100 vehicles, which means you save right now. Lease a certified pre-owned elite 2016 BMW 320i with X-Drive, just 2 dollars a month for 36 months. The ultimate driving experience is closer than you think. BMW Atlantic City, easy to get to. Minutes off exit 37 in the parkway. Online, BMW of Atlantic City.com. Radio.com is proudly sponsored by Gibson Mayer LLC Certified Public Accountant. Gibson Mayer, located in Yardley, PA, is a leading accounting and business consulting firm with a proven track record of handling critical issues with expertise across many different industries, including construction, distribution, hospitality, manufacturing, real estate, service trades, merchandising, professional services, and professional athletes. Give them a call at 215-369-3300. That's 215-369-3300. Your initial consultation is always free. And if you tell them that Tom and Mike from AM and the PM sent you, you'll receive 15% off all income tax services completed by February 15th. That's Gibson Mayor LLC Certified Public Accountants, 215-369-3300. Or visit them on the web at www.gibsonmayor.com. That's GibsonMayor.com. Hey, do you need to get your skills in shape? Then contact the Sconzano Sports Center, located at 5 Carnegie Plaza in Cherry Hill, New Jersey. You can give them a call at 856-889-3434 or visit them on the web at www.sconzanosports.com. John Sconzano offers individual, semi-private, and team training lessons in hitting, pitching, catching, outfield, along with turf rentals. The Sconzano Sports Center is equipped with a 31,000-square-foot indoor facility, four batting cages, and a fourth thousand square foot strengthening and conditioning room. So what are you waiting for? Contact the Gonzana Sports Center today. Hey, do you consider yourself an ex-Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, or Jordan Spieth? Well, head on out on November 5th at Valley Brook Country Club in Blackwood, New Jersey for A2DRadio.com's first ever Real Talk Invitational. 125 per person to enter, teams up to four members, and it includes all you can eat and drink, and contests including longest drive, putting competition, closest to the pin, and the hole in one contest. Once again, it's November 5th at Valley Brook Country Club in Blackwood, New Jersey. The guys here at HBWare.com hope to see you there.
Ah, Tom. Mike. I am. In the PM. And right here at atdradio.com, the worldwide leader of Real Talk. Joined by Sean Radden, Dan Grimes, Rob Hovey on the ones and twos. Every Wednesday night, we are brought to you by Gibson Mayor LLC, your certified public accountant. You can reach them 215 369 3300. 215 369 3300. On the web, Gibson Mayor. Dot com. If you're just joining us, we started the show. We're actually about to getting close to wrapping right now. But we started the show, and our poll question you can vote on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. A2D Radio is where you can find us. Do you agree with the Phillies standing pat at the trade deadline? And you can still let us know yes, no. Real simple. We were two versus one. Mr. Mataraki, Mr. Redden, had, they were okay with it. I, I wasn't. I thought they should have just did something. Yeah, you know, not for the sake of doing it, but you had older guys, and you know you can go back and listen to everything. Everything's up on the site, stays up. Nothing goes away here, babe. That's how you do it. All right, <laughs> but okay. but let me let's do this. I know it's early, and, and, and give give Dan it real quick, Robbie, so he can. So I want his opinion because he's an Eagles guy, and I know real early. We can touch on this as the season goes on, but this is what's fun, you know, because. I love when guys look at the schedule and they say, well, this is a tough game because if we haven't learned anything from this league yet. Some teams that are supposed to be good end up being bad, and you have your teams that are supposed to be bad end up being good, but sometimes people just don't get this yet. But that being said, early predictions. Let's start around the room. Sean, you can go first. Where do you got this team at? Bradford plays all year, minimum nine wins. Well, I was going to say nine and seven exactly. Nine and seven. I'm still on seven and nine. Nothing's moved me yet. <sighs> Man, I, I'm gonna listen. You guys are gonna call me ludicrous, crazy, moron. You, you got know. twelve and four? No, I, I did that <laughs> last year. <laughs> you know, I, this is a bad division. It mm-hmm. just is. I, you know, I'm not sold on anybody in this division. I think if you look down the rosters of all these teams and you say, well, who has the best defense in the division? Well, I think it's here in Philadelphia. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think that's what wins at the end of the day. And you have two turnover machines, you know, as other quarterbacks in this division. And Bradford showed you one thing last year. He didn't turn the ball over a lot. And, and he did a good job of that for the most part of getting better, not turning the football over as the season went on. And I think if he can take care of the football – they can play defense in a bad division. I think they can win the division. I think they can win the division at 10-6. and six. And, and that's, you know, I would say max 11-5 and five if a lot of things go right. Mm-hmm. Everybody's healthy. That would be my max number. But I, but I think they can finish at that 10-6 and six mark and win the division. Now, a lot can change through camp of guys getting hurt. But if you tell me this roster right now, this roster is worthy of 10 wins. There's playmakers mm-hmm. all offensively. There's guys who can make plays. There's playmakers defensively. You, have the, you probably have the second best safety tandem in all of football, yep. which makes up for, for okay the corners. corners. Yep. So yep. your linebacker, you, you're, you're strong there, you know, depending on health. You know, but in terms of the middle, you're, you're short up with Jordan Hicks. You have one of the best tackles in football in Fletcher Cox. And we talked about Benny Logan coming into his own. And we talked about the DN rotation. So – you know, yeah, I'm so excited to just get back to defense in this town. We need to go back to those Dawkins days where people walked in and they feared our defense. And I'm excited to see what Jim Schwartz can do. Listen, I'm a huge fan of Fletcher Cox. Been a great fan of him. He's going to destroy people up the middle. He creates so much havoc. Let the ends go crazy on the outside. Everyone's going to be focused on him. Have free up. Uh, Jordan Hicks and all the other linebackers. It's going to be a great time. I, I'm so excited to watch this defense. Play. Well, I, I don't think it's any coincidence that Dawkins is back in the organization. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I think, think it's – I think it's – not only is it the fact that he's probably one of their top ten all-time best players, a future Hall of Famer, but that influence, that – just the that, that aura, yeah. the, the motivation that comes from that. Like, how can you go to – how can you go to practice at training camp with a guy like Brian Dawkins standing on the sideline and not bust your ass on every right. play. Well, I mean, look at Ed Reed, you know, back in the game. Uh-huh. You know, as a secondary coach for what, the Bills, Bills. I believe? Yeah, the yeah, Bills. So, yeah. you know, Ed Reed, one of the best safeties of all time, too. A guy that guys are going to respect in this league. Mm-hmm. And you see that, mm-hmm. that these guys want to get back into it. And the same thing with Dawkins going a little bit different of an approach. But still, you know, having the guy around your organization, around players, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's not make or break, but it's a good thing. It is a good thing. Right, I mean, yeah, I look at this division. You, there's not one thing that stands out. You got Kirk Cousins never beat an eight and eight team in his. I mean, never beat in a team above five hundred in his career. Dallas is the only team that has a decent offensive line, and their defense is non-existent. You got McLean drinking purple drink, yeah, whatever, whatever, yeah, yeah, like yeah, wow, doing man. whatever he's doing down there. 
the whole division is a dumpster fire. The only team that scares me a little bit is the Giants. And that is determined whether their big money spending this offseason actually pays off. Well, the, the only reason I don't think it, it will for them defensively is because they have so many holes to begin with. Exactly. And they still do. Now, they went and, you know, Jenkins and Vernon, we, we know they're, you know, they're studs. We get that. But the rest of the defense is bad. Right, but here, here's so the thing. So that that's maybe could, you know, still hold them back right, a little but, bit. But with, with the Giants, if things go the way they look like they could be going early on in camp, between Beckham – Cruz Shepard at the wide receiver spot and Rashad Jennings in the backfield with Eli as the quarterback, they may win 10 games, and every one of those games is a 42-35 yeah. shootout. Well, it's what Eli Manning you getting. You getting the mailman's kid or you getting Archie's kid? Yeah. So, I mean, which one are you getting? <laughs> You know, right. I was a oh, I'm out with Eli. Well, you, getting, you getting Eli face or you getting, you know, yeah, and, and the same fist, thing goes, fist pump. Well, the same thing goes for Romo. I mean, I don't think there's any question Dallas can put up points. But they can't. They're not. Oh gonna yeah, stop they're not going to stop anybody. You know, the only team that you can look at defensively and say maybe the Redskins a little bit, but you know, Josh Norman's getting burnt in camp by all his the wide out there. It, it's so. real. Yeah. It's real yeah. interesting though that the Redskins are probably the most balanced team in the division, offense, defense. Yeah, I mean because Agreed. you because yeah. you got to figure right now in New York and Dallas, the offense is way ahead of the defense. Mm-hmm. Philly, you got to figure the defense is way ahead of the ahead. offense. Yep. Washington being the most balanced. Maybe that's you know maybe that's the team to watch. It is if you believe in Kirk Cousins. You, you know, like that? I don't like that. So <laughs> I, I don't believe in him. I, I, I struggle to believe that he can consistently do this. I know right. John Gruden's a big fan of him, which makes Jay a big fan of him. I you know I get all that, but I just not I'm not sold on the guy. Yeah, and I, I, there's no way you can convince me that Tony Romo is going to stay healthy for 16 games. Please, no. I, there's an, I, I Dude, Tony Romo is not going to stay healthy for 16 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> that is already the Dak attack. The Dak attack. Done yeah, in oh Dallas, God. yeah. Tim Tebow two point oh. Well, what is it? They Kellen Moore is is done, right? Yeah, He's broke his full. ankle. Broke his ankle, oh, right. and everybody rumored Foles there, but I'm hearing that Foles is about to go to KC. Be interesting. Andy coming, swiping him out. Yep, swiping him away from the arch enemy. Andy, thank you again. <laughs> Don't let Nick go to Dallas, please. So Tommy, yeah, he'll have a career year. Now. He would. He would sling it. <laughs> Remember, go down. He throw for like forty touchdowns. <laughs> All the dads. Like, that's about 40 touchdowns. I got a little story for you. You see the freaking axe all the time. <laughs> make you freaking sick Finish of your the stomach. Fight. <laughs> you want to burn the big ball in Dallas to the ground. Come, 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 come sit on my lap and bring you warm milk. I got a story for you. Oh, shoot. This is, this is actually good when You guys will like this. I know we're getting, this getting is up. This Tom and Mike storytellers yeah, here. Story, on story right hour. Now. I know we're getting up on time, but VH1. Um, this past weekend, Harry Callis' birthday passed, and – uh, was chit-chatting with a buddy of mine, Tony, who used to work down at Citizens Bank Park back in the day. Uh, his brother-in-law also had some connection to the Phillies. And interesting story as told by my, brother Tony, or, uh, my friend Tony's brother-in-law. So you guys remember 2005 season. It was a year after the Birds went to the Super Bowl. They opened the following season, Monday night, in Atlanta, it's the game that Trotter got into the fight and got ejected before the game even started. They wind up losing the game to the Falcons, like fourteen to ten. A like real, Reese. yeah, a real tough, you know, real tough game. Phillies are off that night, and Harry's actually working the game for NFL Films. So the next day, Harry's flying back on an early morning flight to get back to Philadelphia to work the Phillies game. My buddy Tony's brother-in-law sees him at the bar in the airport so he goes up to harry at the bar and harry is sitting there cranking smokes and and drinking odols like he's pledging a fraternity and and the thing is harry had been on the wagon since whitey died so harry at this point is like shit face drunk and my my buddy tony's brother-in-law says harry what's the greatest whitey story that you can tell me Harry says, well, insert name here. So the 1972 season, and the Phillies had been out of the playoff race since mid-April of that season. I'd been having an affair with a lady named Hope. I don't even remember her last name. I was flying all over the country to various destinations to meet with her. Phillies' record was so bad, Whitey and I were in the bathroom talking about it, and Whitey said, you know, Harry, it's times like this 
this team just, to ha- just has to have hope. And as you know, Harry, you've been having hope all season long over and over and over again. There's no reason the Phils can't have a little hope, too. Got high Got hopes. Got high hopes. And you wonder where hopes. the song High Hopes has and come wonder, from. That's great. That's great. <laughs> Listen, this has been Tom and Mike. I am in the PM right here on the Worldwide Leader, Real Talk, HDRadio.com. I'm Tom Arnone. That's Michael Matarak. He's Sean Radden will be here with us every Wednesday. Dan Grimes joining us. Hopefully he comes back again, too. Appreciate him hopping in on the Eagles talk. Rob Povey will produce. And thank Gibson Mayor LLC, certified public account. GibsonMayor.com is where you can find him, our Wednesday night show sponsor. And real quick, if you don't know, Real Talk Invitation, our first annual golf outing, November 5th, Valley Book Country Club. You can get tickets right on our Facebook, HUDRadio.com is where you can find us and get your tickets there. Thank you, everybody, for listening to Tom and Mike AM and the PM. We'll see you next Wednesday. Stay tuned. Friday morning, AIM Sports Showcase right here at HUDRadio.com. Later. Peace.